What's up everybody, this is the fourth here. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you and explaining to you how I go about making my hardstyle kicks. Now this part is just about the main body of the kick, like before you maybe lay your talk onto it and all that stuff. But oftentimes, this method will produce a nice talk just while you make the kick. Now, in this video, I'm not going to be making a full kick from scratch, but I'm going to be explaining all the theory and different effects that you can use to get a good sounding kick. So, I have another video where I do make a kick from scratch without commentary. So, if you watch both of these videos, then you'll get like the best of both worlds, and hopefully it'll really help you out. Okay, so to start making your kicks, what you need is some kind of kick sample or synthesized kick, and I like to use citrus to do that. Um, a lot of people use Dramazon, and I don't really recommend it just because the way I pitch my kicks, you'll see that it's really really good to use citrus when it comes to pitching your kicks. Okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is just make a basic little kick here. So excuse me while I do that real quick. Um, if you want a bit of a more of a video on how to make kicks using a synthesizer, I have a tutorial about that on my YouTube. I'll have a link in the description so you can check that out. Because here I'm not going to really explain too much, I'm just going to be making it. So, yeah. An important thing to keep in mind when you're making your kick is that you want to have kind of saw wave harmonics. So, like if you try to make a kick using just this sound, it's not going to work very well um, using basic distortion because you don't have the second harmonic to give you that kind of dirty sound. It'll just sound like a square wave no matter what kind of basic distortion you put on it. If you put um, special kind of distortions on it, then you can get that sound. And that's what I did with my fruit kick, hardstyle kick. But it's much easier to just start with having that harmonic. So one way you could do it is just go into the oscillator harmonic editor and just draw it in right there. Or you can tweak the waveform so that, like you see that only has the third one, but you want it to have the second one. And you can do it all the way up to a, a full saw if you want to. But, you know, that's up to you. So I'm just going to do kind of a in between a triangle and a saw. Yeah, that sounds good. And usually with hardstyle kicks, you don't want um, too big of an envelope. Like you want it to go down pretty quickly in volume. Just because you add so much distortion to it that if you have like an envelope like that, it'll sound way too distorted. Okay. So this is a good starting point for your hardstyle kicks. Now from here, you want to make sure it's linked to a mixer track. And... Uh, from this point, it's pretty, pretty simple and straightforward, but it will take 
a fair amount of playing around before you really start getting the sound you want. Like, I've been making kicks for a while, and it still takes quite a bit of playing around to get a really nice sounding kick. But, um, the first thing I typically do is put an EQ on there, and add some kind of a notch to it. And then maybe I'll do other, you know, notches as well, or cuts, but, yeah. So I start off with that, and then I put on a distortion. And this first notch kind of will set the tone for the rest of the kick. So it's pretty important. And you can kind of tweak it later if you need to, but... But if you do do it, it will drastically change the sound. So I'm going to show you a quick example of that. Here's the kick. And... This one I used not that many effects on, but usually it's a lot more, sometimes even two or three mixer tracks worth. But you'll see if I change this, it will change the sound a lot. So yeah. So I start with an EQ, and then a distortion, and then you can use any effects that you want, EQs and distortions being the most common, um, just as long as, you know, the final sound sounds good. So like for this one, I used uh, a phaser, and phasers are really good to give it kind of a bouncy sound. So if I turn this off, you'll hear it doesn't sound, it doesn't have that bounce to it. You see, and if you do use a phaser, you want to um, not have it be sweeping. Because otherwise, if it's sweeping, then every single time you play it, it will sound a little bit differently. You see, and you'll also want to um, either make it merged. You don't have to make it 100%, but a stereo kick sounds kind of weird. For FX kicks, that's good, but, but yeah. And the other thing you can do to make it um, mono is using the stereo shaper on either the preset LR to LL or LR to RR. So yeah. So really from this point you just want to keep adding effects until you get the desired kick sound. And one distortion that I really like, it uh, adds a lot of kind of fuzz and crunch to the kick, is distortion type B on the Fruity Fast Dist. And you can use it just once or multiple times depending, but it really helps you get that crunch sound. Like you can hear that as opposed to that. And then, from there, you just keep shaping it with EQs. With EQs and distortions. And you can use any kind of distortion that you want to use. Um, if you have band distortions, they can help a lot, but you don't need to have a band distortion because I made many of my kicks just with parametric EQ and Fruity Fast Dist. 
Now let's say, um, let's say I need to use multiple mixer tracks because uh, I used up everything here. Let me. because I used up everything here. Um, what you need to do is just make sure it's an empty track that you're going to, and right click it and route to this track only. And then you'll see it's going through here. And you can do that as many times as you need to do, because um, sometimes your kicks can take a lot of different effects. So, now, if your kick starts to become too, if the tail sounds too long and aggressive, uh, which it, it isn't really right now, but I'm just going to do this for the sake of doing it. Also, I can't really hear this that clearly because I'm wearing headphones as opposed to speakers, which I usually do it, so if this kick sounds a little weird... Uh, that's probably why. But what you what you want to do is, if it starts getting too long or too aggressive sounding, you want to add another volume envelope to it in the mix mixer. So you want to do the preset love, uh, the default preset for the fruity love filter, and turn the filter off. And then volume pattern and you can kind of if you plan to add a lot more distortion you might do another kind of envelope like this um, but what you need to start doing is have it be in your pattern and you start playing it and you see if I move this here it'll become really short I'm actually going to put that after the distortion, though. And you can make the curve however you need to make it to get the desired, to get the desired effect. I usually put another, um, just type A, fruity fastest after the type B one, just because. The type B one makes it really loud. It allows it to be really loud. And just, you know, keep doing this until you're happy with it. And sometimes less can be more, but other times you will need a lot of different effects on it. This is almost turning into like a hardcore kick rather than a hardstyle kick, I think, but... But that's okay. Um, I really liked how it sounded before all this, though, so... But yeah, that's basically the way to make a kick. It's just EQ, distortion, EQ, distortion, and so on. And like in this kick example, you can use other effects as well to get a good sound. Um, so really just 
ex experiment, you know. You can get some really cool sounding kicks just through experimentation. And I hope that this tutorial will be helpful to you. And just, you know, don't get discouraged if it doesn't sound good right away. Just keep trying it. If you spend a long time on a kick and it's sounding bad, you know, maybe go back through the effects. Because this one, it could still sound better to me. So, you know, maybe tweak the values in the past. But I usually copy it just so that if it sounds worse, I can get it back to where it was. So. See, like that sounded best like that, in my opinion. And then you can do it for... Okay, and then when you're done and you're happy with how it sounds, you'll want to just export it as a WAV file, like this. I just export that. And then, but sometimes it will sound a lot different because um, having so many EQs and distortions and other effects can create uh, kind of extra noise when it's not in the high quality rendering settings. And if that happens and you don't like how it sounds after that, uh, you can just add on an Edison and record it straight that way. So yeah, once again, I hope this tutorial was helpful. Um, if you want mo more tutorials, be sure to subscribe. I plan to get out a lot in the future. And yeah, cheers.